Ah, hello, uh, I'm Pete Quinnell. Welcome to the Russell Talk News. Today's top story is that there might be chaos backstage in WWE right now, but also there might not be, and wrestlers might be happy. Or maybe both. The reports of chaos came from Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio, where his example was in the form of draft picks, specifically Bianca Belair being drafted to SmackDown. He noted that after it was announced that Bianca would be traded to the blue brand, she was calling herself the SmackDown Women's Champion, but Rhea Ripley would continue to call herself the SmackDown Women's Champion anyway. This reportedly meant that people are being told different things that change all the time. It's not like complete chaos, but there's a lot of chaos right now. With reports prior to the draft stating that nobody was being told where they were going to end up, it stands to reason that last minute decisions that might even come as a surprise to the creative team would be chaos inducing. However, there's been some reports to refute this. Worked Wrestling on Twitter directly responded to Meltzer's report by saying, Dave Meltzer via Wrestling Observer Radio described WWE backstage after the draft as chaotic. However, we've instead heard many backstage are very happy with the way the roster shook out, with most wrestlers looking forward to the plans for the World Heavyweight Championship and SummerSlam. And maybe both are true. Wrestlers before the draft were stressed but are happy with how things shook out? That seems reasonable, right? Well, according to Meltzer himself on Wrestling Observer Radio, Bianca Belair and the Street Profits knew ahead of time that they would be drafted to SmackDown, which kind of goes against the other reports of no one being told where they would end up and also kind of refutes the whole chaos thing that he was talking about. So maybe there isn't, and maybe some last minute changes or decisions being made isn't chaos. Maybe. You know what is chaos though? Vince McMahon. Like he just is the personification of chaos. And while he definitely isn't running creative anymore, he sure does seem to be giving a lot of the pitches for things, doesn't he? That's probably how we ended up with two Omos matches on two consecutive pay-per-views against big stars. But there might even be a line for the creative team where they cannot handle Vince's shenanigans anymore. And even though that line is probably very far away from where it should be, there's some things that even they can't agree with. According to WrestleWotes via Give Me Sport, Vinny M pitched several names for Roman Reigns' next opponent at Night of Champions in Saudi Arabia, and some of them were kind of scoffed at, like, that doesn't make any sense. Though I'd like to point out the original article said, that hat doesn't make any sense, which I'd like to think was Vince wearing a ridiculous hat rather than a typo. So who do you think Vince was pitching for Night of Champions that doesn't make sense? Baron Corbin? Bad Bunny? Paul Heyman? Oh, it's, it's Omos, isn't it? It's always Omos. Let me know what you think in the comments. Whoever we end up getting, WrestleVote is reportedly noting that they most likely will not have been pitched by Vince, which is somewhat of a relief. Coherent storytelling, fingers crossed anyway. Don't miss the most controversial book of the year as WrestleTalk presents The New War, WWE versus AEW. Available now in print and ebook at WrestleShop.com. Would you look at that? Our new book, WWE vs. AEW The New War, you know, the one you just heard about, is number one and number two on Amazon for wrestling books, for paperback and digital copies respectively, that is. Go get your copy. Speaking of coherent storytelling with no last minute changes, remember that time that Brock Lesnar entered a fatal four-way and made it a five-way at day one 2022 and then won the WWE Championship from Biggie and then lost that title to Bobby Lashley and then won it back and then lost it to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 38? So Roman held both World titles? Do you remember that? Seemingly confirming what we all thought at the time, this was all hastily put together according to Fightful Select. They note that prior to WWE Day 1 2022, there were no plans to combine the WWE and Universal Championship. But after Roman Reigns contracted COVID, the decision was made to include Lesnar in the WWE title match, have him win it, and then go on to lose it to Reigns at WrestleMania. Great idea, guys. Can't see, uh, oh, no, is there any? No, nope, can't see any flaws in that one whatsoever. Great plan. They also note that at one point last year, plans were in place for the titles to be split, with Drew McIntyre or Seth Rollins lined up to face Cody Rhodes for the WWE Championship. However, within a few weeks, those plans had been shelved. You mean we could have had Cody Rhodes finish his story earlier and with even less adversity? Zero out of 10, terrible story. As previously mentioned, the draft finished up on Raw this week, except psych, no it didn't as there were two final picks left, which WWE sneaked in after the show finished. The two ring announcers, Samantha Irvin and Mike Rome, will be swapping shows, with Irvin moving to Raw and Rome going to SmackDown. This is most likely being done to keep Irvin and Ricochet on the same brand as the two are dating, and WWE like to keep couples together these days. But secretly, I think it's because they wanted Irvin to keep doing Imperium's entrance. Now, as you may have seen yesterday, AEW All In tickets went on pre-sale, the show they'll be holding at Wembley Stadium in August, Wembley. There was some pleasant surprise when AEW announced they'd be running Wembley, their first stadium show, and even more shockingly, they've opened up basically the entire stadium for seating, meaning there'll be around 
80 to 85,000 seats available, most likely. And after the first day of pre-sale tickets being live, Tony Khan revealed that they had sold a whopping 36 thousand tickets. This already means All In is going to be their highest attended event, smashing their previous record of 21,000 in the Arthur Ashe for Grand Slam in September 2021, and it's only been one day of pre-sale. Tickets for general sale go live on Friday this week, so it looks like the event is already lined up to be a success, and they haven't even announced a match yet. But that wasn't all TK got up to on Twitter, because he also happened to come across a certain tweet from Mike Coppinger? Copinger? Cop Copinger, who is a journalist for ESPN. He tweeted to say, Hearing Wembley is scaled for only 40k for AEW. Far cry from last April when I was ringside for Tyson Fury, Dillian White, and it was packed to the brim with 94,000. Which is quite easily disproved if you simply take a look at the seating plan for All In, because there's more seats available than that. TK wanted to correct the score on this one, but didn't just correct Mike. He instead tweeted, Lies! What a load of crap. Tell your agent Nick Khan to shove it up his ass. <laughs> Well, all right then, TK. Tell us how you really feel. He didn't stop either, with a follow-up tweet saying, Since you carry the credentials of a credible reporter and represent the worldwide leader, I'm just curious, who was your source for this, and how could a reporter representing ESPN tweet something about a legit news story that's so blatantly wrong and easily verified as a falsehood? Tell us how you really feel. And now it's time for the one minute one take, where I will recount the events of last night's episode of NXT in one minute. And in one take, there's nobody here to laugh at me if things go wrong this time, so this of course will be the one time I nail it first try with no mistakes. I'm ready. I'm centered. I'm I'm whole. I'm ready. Start the timer. Wesley beat Drew Gulak to retain his North American Championship with Tyler Bate evening the Charlie Dempsey shaped odds on the outside. Trick Williams challenged... Chall challenged... Bron Breaker to a fight with which Breaker agreed to for next week. Noam Dar asked JD Madonna to injure Dragon Lee in his match with him tonight. That's not very nice. JC Jane defeated Gigi Dolan clean in their heated blood feud because we can't have anything nice, I suppose. Also, JC got busted open a lot. Ow. Axiom defeated Screeps in a not mask versus mask match, but Scripps got a mask anyway. And oh my god, it was Reggie the whole time? Brooks Jensen is still a dweeb. Great story, guys. JD Madonna beat Dragon Lee after Noam Dar interfered. Great. The prompt is not going fast enough. Joe Gacy beat Joe Coffey. Uh, thanks to interference from the schism, I'm sensing a pattern here. Danny Palmer won in a debut match against Tatum Paxley. Von Wagner looked at some photos. It was weird. Alba Fire and Island Dawn retained their NXT Women's Tag belts against Caden Carter and Katana Chance, and it didn't matter who won this because both teams were dropped into the main roster anyway, and Indy Hart will vacate her NXT Women's Championship. Man, meaning a bunch of other women played tug of war over the belt. This prompter is so slow, and then fought. That was probably way over a minute. I have a timer this time. Why do they keep doing this? This is outside of the minute timer, but seriously, stop drafting your champions to the main roster, forcing them to vacate the belt. She might have needed to vacate anyway due to injury, but even so, just figure it out, WWE. Isla Dawn and Alba Fire have said they're going to defend their NXT women's tag belts across all three brands anyway, because why not, I suppose? And with the draft absolutely gutting the NXT roster of all its people, though I guess if all of them are still going to be on NXT anyway, it doesn't matter, NXT may be looking to fill some of those gaps in their roster once more. And so, the cycle continues. The circle of life. Simba, everything the light touch. Considering WWE recently shut down an entire division, there's a few people they could call on to come back to the company, and there may be one of those soon, as PW Insider is reporting that Shah Samuels, who is part of the now-defunct NXT UK, was recently seen at the Performance Center in Orlando. Samuels was released in August last year, and while this by no means confirms a return or anything of the sort, it's worth noting in case we see Samuels back on our screen soon, or return in a coaching role, or something similar. And hey, let's end with something fun. For Night of Champions at the end of this month, Russell Talk will be hosting a watch party. If you've seen anything from our Clash at the Castle watch party we did last September, you'll know it was an incredible night. So check the link in the description to get your tickets. Loads of the Wrestle Talk team will be there, though unfortunately not me this time. And there will be a live in-person Quizzle Mania right before the pre-show as well. So get your tickets using the link in the description. WWE and AEW talent have left their companies. Check out the video to find out more. Now don't mind me while I just sit here and do nothing suspicious at all name Victoria Crawford, formerly known as Alicia. She added in her bio that her time with WWE was 2006 to 2023, adding to the idea that she has left. She also posted an Instagram story reiterating that she was formerly known as Alicia Fox, with the added bit of hashtag employable in the corner as well. So yeah.